Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It is Wednesday, May 6th, and as promised, I'm taking a look at where we are at with the Pioneer and Modern metagames and how things have developed since the advent of Companions and Ikoria and what that is doing to the decks that are, um, that are viable and that are posting results in preliminaries and I'm including the challenges and the qualifiers and, and the other tournaments that are getting posted. Um, I'm using MTG Goldfish data, so you know, take that for what it's worth. They do uh, post er most things, but every now and then things do slip through the cracks. But this should be a pretty good uh, picture of where we're at. Um, they Both formats have significantly changed since Ikoria. Um, some decks have disappeared. Some decks have, have reappeared. Um, companion usage has stabilized somewhat in Pioneer. It's in the low 70th percentile on the number of decks showing up in results that are using companions. It has been rising slowly in Modern. Um, discounting the first couple of events... Once people started getting used to the decks, it, it had stabilized around 60%, and now we're creeping up to close to 70%. Um, oddly enough, that's still less than any other format. So, uh, Pioneer has really stratified a bit in the tiers of decks. Modern has a strong top, and then, as usual, it has this very long tail of decks. There were over 60 decks that appeared that have appeared in tournament results since Ikoria's debut. And that's relative, that's pretty high. That's a lot of different decks. All right, Pioneer. No surprise to anyone, I think. Orzov, Orzov Auras with Loris as the companion is the number one deck. Uh, these totals here you'll see in this video are all combined uh, results across preliminaries challenges, super qualifiers, um, those events. Uh, of course, this is manually compiled data. I might be off by a couple here or there, but the general gist is about the same. Uh, Lotus Breach is right behind with 61. Um, these are definitely the top two decks in the format. Uh, and that would be, if I call it Tier 1, some people use Tier 0 as a phrase, uh, you could argue that those two decks are Tier 0. And if that's the case, your Tier 1 would be Boros Burn, Demir Inverter, and the White Devotion Splashing Blue deck. Um, those are the next level. Um, Demir Inverter is starting to use Yorion. This is a new development. There's seven of these 38 used Yorion. Um... Most often, though, if your opponent does not present a companion at the beginning of the game, it's a safe bet that they're either on Inverter or Breach. There there aren't very many exceptions at this point. Um, and then Boros Heroic is right behind. This is the Featherless Feather deck. And it has really picked up some steam lately. Uh, especially with... I think it's Fight is One is the card from Ikoria has helped the deck out a little bit. And Loris just lets you rebuy uh, the any auras or uh, creatures that the deck has already gone through. Uh, it's proven to be very effective in that deck. Your next level, uh, you can see here things start to level out in the, um, the numbers across decks. Um, Mono White Devotion, this is the one not splashing blue. Uh, it is starting to use Yorion and just playing more white creatures. I'm not sure that's the right approach for it, but we'll see. Uh, but it's right behind here. Then you've got Mono Red Aggro, almost always using Obosh. Hardened Scales with Loris, Gruel Stompy with Obosh. The Jes uh, Jeskai Fire Super Friends deck with Yorion is kind of an interesting new one that's appeared. Um, Sultide Delirium is an interest, and Niv to Light as well are interesting cases here where they're 
really split on what companions they use or if they use any. I've seen with Delirium, it's Yorion or Gigantha or none. With Niv to Light, it's Gigantha or Yorion or uh, there was one other. I can't remember what it was. Um, or none. So it's all kind of split. Uh, Blue White Control also kind of hanging around here. It's running Kahira frequently. Uh, actually, about half the time, since it has almost no creatures in the deck. So Kahira works. Uh, sometimes it's using Yorion, sometimes none. Bant Spirits is almost completely split. It's either using Gigantha or it's not using one. Um, so this is kind of the second level here of of Pioneer decks and where your metagame stands. And some of the rest, uh, some interesting decks here. There's uh, a Pioneer version of the Gyruda clone tribal deck that we've seen in Standard. There's also a modern version that has pop popped up. You get additions like Sakashima the Imposter and things like that, which is kind of interesting. Uh, Orzov Doom Foretold has started to make some appearances recently, along with a couple of different Rally the Ancestors deck. One is Black White, one is Obzon. There's a Jeskai Cycling deck that has popped up every now and then. And then uh, just some other uh, random stuff. There are about 35 or 40 different decks that appeared uh, in all the events. Decks that have effectively disappeared are Mono Green Walkers, you're hardly seeing any results from that deck anymore. Mono Black Aggro is nearly gone. Um, the In Soul Artifacts deck, there's a Grixis version that shows up every now and then, but it has basically gone away. And Golgari Stompy is pretty much gone. It's been uh, replaced by the Gruul Obosh deck. Uh, it would not surprise me if somebody tried... Golgari Obosh, that might be worth looking at. Let's go on to Modern. So this is the biggest gap for a Tier 1 deck I've seen in Modern in a really long time. Um, I think we probably... I, I don't want to raise the specter of um, Hogak, but that was the last time a deck was as dominant as Burn has been as far as posting results. Now, the results are spread among top 8s, top 16s, and top 32s. So it's not like it's winning everything. In fact, it doesn't win very often. But that deck is everywhere right now. So Luris Burn is definitely top of the uh, top of the pops here. So that's your Tier 0. Tier 1, I would say, is probably the next 3 decks. Uh, 4 decks, probably. Jund, uh, mostly with your Lurus. There are a couple of holdouts still wanting to play their Lilianas and not uh, dropping down to, to uh, CMC permanents. But more often than not, you're seeing Jund with Lurus at the helm. Eurosa, mostly with Yorion, is next. Humans and Gigantha Humans is a significant chunk of these. Um... There are the only commonly played humans card that has double mana symbols in its casting cost is Oriok Champion. So if you need to play Oriok Champion, you're not playing Gigantha. But some people are trying it and having some success with the Gigantha build. Amulet Titan here right behind. And we start to see kind of the long tail of how modern after the top flattens out quite a bit. Devoted Devastation is around 20 copies. Bant Snow Control right behind. Gruel Monsters, mostly with Obosh at the helm. That's what it, you know. people have been calling this red-green mid-range. I like Gruel Monsters. It sounds a little better. And then Hardened Scales is back with Lurus at the helm. That's a deck that had disappeared after Mox Opal was banned. And now Lurus has helped spawn... There's a green-black and green-white builds. Uh, I lumped them together here. 
because they're basically doing the same thing. And then some of the others, uh, again, we got kind of our long tail going on here. Four color snow control. This is usually, it's kind of split between no black or no green, I think it is. Or is it, no, it's no red. Uh, it just depends on which way you want to take it. Ad nauseum. And you, you'll see here, uh, Neo Brand down the list a little here, some of the combo decks that have started popping up in uh, response to all the companion shenanigans that are going on. And you see here a lot of Lurus, right? Blitz, Rock, Eldrazi Tron, uh, all kind of hanging around. Dredge is still hanging around. I'm a little surprised because people have started picking up on Graveyard Hate to stop Lurus being effective, and Dredge is going to kind of suffer from that. Grixis Delver is the new kid on the block on this page. Uh, we have not seen that deck almost since the days of uh, Treasure Cruise, and kind of good to see it back. Uh, my son has built the deck, and he's greatly enjoying how it plays. So if you like Delver, uh, definitely check out some of those builds. Some of the top of the rest here, we've got Niv to Light, which again is split between Gigantha, Yorion, or no, Nothing as a Companion. Grixis Death Shadow is still hanging around. It's now the most popular of the various Death Shadow builds. Infect and Tron are still right below the top here, still hanging around. Tron has occasionally picked up Gigantha as a uh, companion. I don't know that the deck really needs it, but hey, you know, if you've got a free extra card in your hand, that's a threat. It is a 5-5. Five -five. Um, Heliod Devoted Company. So this is the Devoted Vizier Druid combo. And um, adding in the Heliod Walking Ballista. So it's kind of combo heavy deck. Bogles is right there. Luris and Bogles has become a very good combination, as has Yorion and Kiki Cord. So, it, I mean, if you're going 80 card decks, Kiki Cord, it's a toolbox deck, and it always wants to play as many cards as it, and have as many silver bullets as it can. And I've actually even seen an 81 card build of it. And Storm, still hanging around. I have seen a couple builds with Gigantha as the companion, so be watching for that. And like I said, there were over eight, over 60 decks that appeared in here. So the formats have changed quite a bit. I mean, we have a clear front runner in Modern, something we've not had in a while. And some of the decks appearing below it have shuffled around quite a bit from where we were before uh, Ikoria. And Lurus is, you know, I mean, look at all the Lurus decks we've got here. Um, still, that said, at the top, there's more decks not using Companions than in any other format. And then in Pioneer, it's kind of a clear 1, 2, 3, with 4 and 5 right behind. And, yeah, Lurus has definitely made things more aggressive. And that has uh, shifted metagames to the point where combo starts becoming more effective because the more aggressive decks have less interaction and are less able to stop combos. And more aggressive decks can sometimes get under control decks. So control has dropped off a little bit. So it'll be interesting now to see how things develop and where things go. I'll update these numbers every... I'll probably redo this every couple of weeks. Um, in between, I'll look at, on, on the Wednesdays, I'll look at what companions we're seeing and what decks are being played for each companion so that you've got kind of a feel for when your opponent reveals a companion, what deck are they probably on or what deck might they be on. And hopefully that kind of information is helpful to you. So that's about it for now. Uh, we will be back at you tomorrow with a Pioneer League dump. And if you enjoy what I'm doing here, do please like and subscribe and tell your friends. And I would love to get some feedback. And if this information is helpful, what kind of things you're looking for and uh, what kind of things you don't need anymore.
and let, let's adapt. Let's let's get the info out there that you guys want to see. So hit that like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so we know when the next video is up. And we will talk to you tomorrow. Thanks a bunch. Stay safe. Bye-bye.